Um, Michael, how are you doing? I am okay, thank you. How are you? Excellent. Uh, Michael is hailing from, are you in London or are you outside of London these days? I'm, I'm in London, yeah. Excellent. Okay. Remember the days and look back fondly to the days that we can hang out again in London. So it'd be great. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, as uh, Pinky just introduced, maybe some of you don't know uh, that uh, Michael is a creator of Flux. Uh, early in the days, uh, it was a, a project that was created here at Weaveworks. Uh, and so it's been really great to see this journey and hopefully you enjoyed uh, eHorse Talk right now about how important it was for us to make sure that if, one, it was open source and that we had it outside in a foundation the CNCF. So it's my pleasure here to have a quick chat with Michael to kind of reflect on um, this journey and how you know those thoughts might be useful for people who are getting started with GitOps today. Because uh, I think some of Michael and the team's experience from the time, um, I don't want to say that they were at the forefront, but they kind of were. They were having the same kinds of uh, thoughts and sometimes emotions about GitOps that maybe some of you had today. So we hope to share that and hopefully it'll be useful. Um, so first of all, Michael, um, as having created Flux, uh, I'd like to just sort of think back, put your cap on from that time. I'm sure you, know, you weren't thinking about something that you'd put open source and you'd put into a foundation. You probably had very concrete, pragmatic solutions uh, uh, problems that you needed to solve. Uh, can you share some of, of that with us? Yeah, of course. So you're right. We um, the whole open source thing was was came afterwards. The 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 basic need we had at the time was that we had a software as a service um, platform called Weave Cloud, um, still around, and we needed to be able to roll out new code. That was pretty much it. That was the requirement. And um, so we built this thing. Um, actually, the, the first thing that was called the Flux uh, was this very elaborate um, system where it kind of did a canary rollouts and then showed you charts of error rates and comparisons and, and stuff like that, which uh, and had like a client side proxy for redirecting traffic to each service and so on. Um, and this was all before people were talking about service meshes and all that stuff. And it was uh, way over ambitious. So um, that sort of didn't go anywhere. Then we just went back to the original requirement and did something a lot simpler. Um, and that was pretty successful. Uh, it did what we needed it to. And what it was doing, because we kept all our config in, in Git, it would roll out the, a new container image and then it would make a commit to Git to make sure that Git had kind of the the right recovery point if we needed to, to use config from Git. Uh, and then one day someone said, why don't we just apply everything from Git? Uh, and this was, was like the, the unthinkable thought uh, and we did it and it was a bit frightening, um, but it did work. That's exciting. Um, so we were chatting about how there might be a lot of people today who have those same emotions, right? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, what was the mindset where you said, okay, this seems scary, but we'll try it anyway. What were the things that maybe <laughs> you had in place or if you're just like, okay, we're gonna do it. <laughs> no, that's what we did. We, we shut our eyes and flipped the switch and crossed the things. Um, we were pretty lucky actually, because we had some, some people that were quite experienced uh, SREs um, site reliability engineers, um, I think that's a, a sort of term of art, but they had put in place a lot of kind of um, a very good safety net. Um, so we had a, you know, a support rotor and run books and basically lots of very detailed instructions for uh, recovering the system if anything went wrong. So it wasn't, it, it was sort of frightening to flip the switch, but we knew that ultimately nothing was going to be too terrible. Um, and, you know, get, Having GitOps or having Flux, once we'd flipped that switch, it smoothed away a lot of um, a lot of mistakes that might be made by people doing things by hand. But we always needed that safety net. You know, you can, you sort of you can't do without it really. Um, it's complementary. Yeah, and I guess a shout out also to Google, right? I guess Google has really made that uh, a practice of having the um, yes, SREs. That's right. 
Um, and I guess a quick question, like, so you had some people on the team with that experience. What was the uh, length of time to sort of train up on like, hey, this is a way we're going to think about this. And then probably at the time, wasn't even thinking about, I mean, the term GitOps didn't exist, but it all clearly helped with creating the right like work environment, the team environment. So what was the on-ramping for that? Like a couple of weeks, <laughs> a couple of months? Different yeah, ways so, um, so people that were, so in terms of GitOps, I mean, we were we were already doing keeping everything in Git, include you know. So we had kind of layers from we had used Terraform and Ansible, and then we had Flux for for keeping runtime config. Um, so we're already doing a lot of the things that you would think of as GitOps, or you know, ended up being referred to as GitOps. Um, and the thing that was missing was automation, um, or some of that kind of last mile uh, delivery stuff. Um, but in, in terms of uh, bringing people on board, yeah, I think we even went as far as having a, a kind of training program. And this is quite a small company, remember? So this was a bit unusual, perhaps. We had a training program and then we would um, shadow people. Um, so that's, I think that's important because, you know, it, you have the safety net of all the sort of operation stuff you've set up, but you also need a safety net for individuals because it's kind of pretty scary going on to the support rotor, even when there's lots of automation. Uh, and you, you don't want to press the wrong button. So it's quite important to help people through that initial rather frightening period. Yeah, definitely. And you know, hopefully that helps people understand if you're getting started, we totally get it. If, uh, <laughs> you know, trying new things, wondering if te your team is right for it. Um, all those things are very valid concerns. and. Uh, it's great to have an event like this where hopefully either you meet other community members who um, can, can share that information or you use some of these platforms where um, that safety is, is built in. Um, and, and speaking it, it turned of- out that flipping that switch was, was a total non-event. It just made almost no difference to anyone's life yes. uh, except for there was some, you know, fewer opportunities to make mistakes. But, yes, yes. Yeah, <laughs> nothing Actually, went wrong a, at all. That's a very great comment, right? I think if you're, if any of you are on the pre get up side, uh, very valid to have those emotions. And it's great to hear from people on the other side now. Uh, and as I mentioned, people like Pinky and others in our community who are very much uh, uh, enjoying the value of GitOps using Flux today. So uh, it, it's good to look back at how something might've seemed scary at the time, but now it's, uh, it's, it's very smooth and part of daily operations. Um, so a quick mention to community, because I want to close out with some great comments that you had. Um, I was there, I, I've been at WeaveWorks a while, and it was great to kind of join. We're like, okay, we've got a bunch of these open source projects, and Flux was one of them, as we mentioned, built for something very pragmatic, and we hadn't even really put energy into, should we grow this community? Um, and yet it was growing kind of organically on its own. Uh, and then when we kind of said, let's do the minimum possible, just do a few things and see what happens. It was quite um, fun to see the response. Um, I was joking how like, you must feel like a proud parent to see <laughs> all, all the love and excitement. And then it made sense for us to start saying, OK, let's let's take this seriously. Let's let's talk about the CNCF. Let's go through those many steps. Um, how has that felt for you? It is a bit like that, I, um, like being a, a proud parent. I, in fact, one of the things I'm most proud of is, is actually less about the, the code and more about the, the sort of tone and mode of operation and the sort of ambiance of, of the community, which I'm, I really enjoy. And, um, and the way we've managed to, we've got a, a governance, which is very consensus oriented. So it's about getting agreement from everyone that feels they have a stake. Um, not all projects do that. But I think it's really, really important. It's something that I'm, I'm really pleased that, um, that we managed to uh, all agree on having that uh, governance. Yeah, um, and I think the joining joining the CNCF was definitely that the turning point that we we hit 1.0 and joined the CNCF and did a major code change, all in the space of a very small number of months. And it, it really, really changed the focus of the, the project from just being the thing that solves our own problem um, that other, you know, happens to be handy for some other people to something that we, we were trying to be very deliberate about 
having a community and and bringing on other people that have a stake in getting them to you know tell us what they want from it as well yeah and we have one minute left um, before our final topic but i want to give a quick shout out you've been been enjoying uh Daniel Holbeck's music and Daniel Holbeck is a community manager. Great kudos to getting us through all these steps as well through incubation and now uh, getting close to graduation. Um, so to close out, we've been talking about how you know Kubernetes um, or GitOps is one natural evolution of Kubernetes. And I think the work that you and that the team and the community has done around Flux is so reflective of that. Um, and so this constant idea, right, of observing the ideal state of a repo, you were talking about how GitOps doesn't have to stop there. There's a whole future. How, how are you seeing potentially what GitOps may be in the years to come? Yeah, well, I, I agree. Uh, Kubernetes is a big part of GitOps. It's not the only way to- uh, Maybe the, it was too much for the internet to take. <laughs> Well, I'll close out for Michael. I think uh, Michael was sharing some uh, great ideas about how with um, cluster API and the new developments that, you know, you wouldn't be doing GitOps just for um, particular um, uh, repos being uh, an ideal state for others, um, but one cluster could be the ideal state for um, multiple clusters. So there's just a we're just getting started with GitOps and hopefully that's exciting for many people um, in terms of you know, what you might benefit um, from this starting stage um, moving forward. 